Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading The Tale of Benjamin Bunny by Beatrix Potter. Let's see what happens in another story by Beatrix Potter. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trick-trot, trick-trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. There might be two words there that we might not know. Do you know the word gig? Gig is like a, a carriage. So gig is like a carriage. And also it says Mrs. McGregor has her bonnet on. She has her hat on. So a gig was coming along the road. A carriage was coming. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip, and a jump to call upon his relatives who lived in the wood at the back of Mr. McGregor's garden. I think we know that family. Let's see. Do you recognize them? That wood was full of rabbit holes, and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin Button's, um, Bunny's aunt and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Old Mrs. Rabbit was a widow. She earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and mufties. Mufties is like a scarf. And mufties. I once bought a pair of, at a bazaar. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. There's two things I wanted you to see here. There are two notes here that take us out of the story and the storyteller tells you. One, she says, I once bought a pair of mufties at a bazaar and also tells us lavender is what we call rabbit tobacco. So there are two points where the story breaks off and it breaks what we call the fourth wall. It breaks the fourth wall and the, uh, the, either the author or the reader talks directly to us. Not only does Mrs. Bunny make these scarves, but she also sells them at the bazaar and the reader has bought one before. Little Benjamin Bunny did not much, did not very much want to see his aunt he came around the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin, Peter. You see Peter's ear sticking out? Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly. He was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has gotten your clothes? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden. And he described how he had been chased about the garden and had dropped his shoes and coat. Little Benjamin sat down beside his cousin and assured him that Mr. McGregor had gone out in the gig. Do you remember what gig means? Had gone out in the carriage. Mr. McGregor had gone out in the gig and Mrs. McGregor also and certainly for the day, because she was wearing her best bonnet. Hmm, I know he's trying to be reassuring, but I wouldn't trust that, would you? We don't know when the McGregors are going to be back. Peter said he hoped that it would rain. At this point, old Mrs. Rabbit's voice was heard inside the rabbit hole calling, Cottontail, Cottontail! Fetch some more chamomile. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here, they looked down into Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped by an old tam shanter of Mr. McGregor's. Can you see what that means? It means a hat. So it's the hat and the coat and the shoes. Can you see them on the scarecrow? Little Benjamin said, 
It spoils people's clothes to squeeze under a gate. The proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first, but it was no consequence as the bed below was neatly raked and quite soft. Uh-oh, are they back in Mr. McGregor's garden? They are. Peter knows how dangerous it is in there. But there they are back again. I don't know if that's a good idea. It had been sewed with lettuce. They left a great many odd little footmarks all over the bed, especially Benjamin, who was wearing clogs. You see all the footprints that they've left behind? <laughs> little Benjamin said that the first thing to be done was to get Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. They took them off the scarecrow. There had been rain during the night. There was water in the shoes and the coat was somewhat shrunk. Benjamin tried on the tam shanter but it was too big for him. <laughs> Look at that big floppy hat. I kind of like it on him. Then he suggested that they fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. That's a good idea. Does anyone at home know what a handkerchief is? It is a cloth tissue. So it's a square piece of material that you can blow your nose into and then wash, or you might wear it on your neck, or you might wear it in your hair on your head, but it's a square that you can reuse. And that's why Peter used it as clothing at the beginning. And now they're gonna use it as a bag. And my dad actually always has a handkerchief in his pocket to use as a tissue. So then he suggested that they fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. I bet Peter had a scary time yesterday in this garden. I bet he doesn't like being back. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and ate a lettuce leaf. He said he was in the habit of coming to gardens with his father to get lettuce for a Sunday dinner. The name of the little, little Benjamin's papa was old Mr. Benjamin Bunny. The lettuce certainly was very fine. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently, he dropped half the onions. He's not having fun, is he? Little Benjamin said that it was not possible to get back to the pear tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly toward the other end of the garden. They went along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doorsteps, cracking cherry stones. They winked at Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin Bunny. You see the little mice watching them. There they are. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. There go all the onions, plop, plop, plop. They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever and his eyes were as big as lollipops. I think he's scared. Oh look, he must have picked up his bag again. I think the onions are back inside. He was a step or two in front of his cousin, cousin when suddenly he stopped. Oh, what does he see? This is what those little rabbits saw round the corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute less than no time, he hid himself and Peter and the onions under a large basket. Uh-oh, they're under there. The cat got up and stretched herself. Can you stretch? She stretched herself and came to sniff at the basket. Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. Oh no. She sat there for five hours. 
I cannot draw you a picture of Benjamin Bunny underneath the basket because it is quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful and it made Peter Rabbit and the little Benjamin cry. So there the author is again talking to us. She's telling us she wants to show us a picture of what's going on inside, but she can't. It's much too dark. And plus, their eyes are tearing up because the onions hurt their eyes. Have you ever been in the kitchen when onions are being cut? It makes your eyes sting. I cannot draw you a picture of Benjamin and Peter under the basket because it is quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful and it made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat upon the basket. Are they gonna be trapped here all day? Oh, at length there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall on the upper terrace. He was smoking a pipe of rabbit tobacco and had a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. Old Mr. Rabbit had no opinion whatsoever of cats. He took a tremendous leap off the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and cuffed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse and scratched off a handful of fur. Oh my goodness. The cat was too much surprised to scratch back. When old Mr. Rabbit had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. He came back to the basket and took out his son, Benjamin, by the ears. Then he took out his nephew, Peter. Then he took out the hand handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. When Mr. McGregor returned about half an hour later, he observed several things that perplexed him. Huh, he was confused or perplexed. Hmm, it looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs. Only the footmarks were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut herself inside the greenhouse and locked the door upon the outside. Huh, how'd that happen? We know, don't we? Was it old Benjamin Bunny? When Peter Rabbit came home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he had found his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief and old Mrs. Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with a bunch of herbs and rabbit tobacco. The end. I bet they're getting ready for another day of cooking. Maybe they're even gonna make a soup. What would you make with these ingredients here? Remember we learned rabbit tobacco is lavender. She has lavender and onions. And what was the other thing they said? And herbs. So that might be perfect for soup. Great listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tale of the somewhat naughty Benjamin Bunny. And I'm so glad that once again, everyone got out of Mr. McGregor's garden safely. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope you get a chance to go outside and hippity hop in the sunshine. See you all soon. Bye-bye.